Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We spend so much time worrying. I would even suggest that maybe even we live in a season where fear is in style. Whether we're talking about Russians or North Koreans, the president or Islam, high cholesterol, heights, darkness, spiders. <laughs> fear is in style. In 2016, Chapman, Chapman University did a study of what Americans were most afraid of. And here's what they found. The first one, the, the biggest one, was corruption of public officials. And that was before the Russians. <laughs> Terrorism. That we won't have enough money for future needs. The death of loved ones. I was very surprised, much further down the list, almost at the bottom, were a fear of zombies and clowns. Much lower on the list. I don't know why. Stress management experts tell us that only 2% of our worrying time is actually spent on things that we can actually make a difference in. In other words, that it can actually be helped by worrying. What happens with the other 98%? Well, 40% of the things never happen. 35% are things that can't be changed anyway, no matter what we do. 15% of those things actually turned out better than what we expected. And 8% we spent worrying about pretty much petty issues that didn't really matter in the long run. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, former president, said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. And I wonder whether or not today Jesus is saying the same thing in the gospel. Do not be afraid. This is the most repeated command in the Bible. From the very beginning to the very end, in Genesis chapter 15, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. And then in Revelation, do not fear what you are about to suffer. Beware, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you may be tested. And for ten days you will have affliction. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown <coughs> of life. Notice, not... You all should pray more, or go to church, give more money away, or study the Bible harder. No. Don't be afraid. This gospel reading is actually inserted in the midst of the Sermon on Mission, Jesus' Sermon on Mission. He's sending the disciples out to do mission and ministry in the world. And he's letting them know they're going to find all sorts of troubles along the way as they seek to do that. Some of them will be persecuted. Maybe even some of them will die. And people on the outside might look in and say, oh, see, look how weak the church is or look how weak the disciples are. But Jesus is trying to say, no, this is when we are strongest. This is an example of God's strength in our lives. Don't let troubles trouble you. Jesus says, yes, some will suffer. Some might even die. They might be martyred. But there is no one so valuable than you or me to our God and to Jesus that God sent to die for us. And so he uses language like the disciple is not above the teacher, strangely comforted as we experience suffering and trials and temptations. We know that Jesus has experienced these as well. It's a life that he lived. So we're to be prepared, but not overwhelmed. 
to be fearless because Christ has seen it all and experienced it all. And he's with you through it all. And so we are to replace our fears with faith. And God cares not only about our big problems, our big situations that we go through in life. No. God cares about the tiniest of details. God cares about the details of your life. Your illnesses and your pains and your sorrows and your joys and your temptations, your dangers, your delights, your troubles. No one in the world is going to be more supportive of you and more caring for you than God himself. You can count on it. God has your back. Jeremiah says, but the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. God has our, his eye on us as he does a sparrow. That's those, that smallest of birds that's sold in the marketplace. Two for one penny. A tiny bit of meat for a poor family. God cares more about us as he does that sparrow. He has this amazing, intimate inventory on insignificant data. Even the hairs of your head are counted. It makes me feel better as the hairline goes a little receding, you know? But God even cares about those. He loves us. He loves us through everything that we go through. God has your back. I decided to look up uh, what that means, and I, I used the Urban Dictionary. It's a, it's a web-based dictionary of slang and cultural uh, phrases, and it's user-submitted, so people submit what they think are definitions. And here's a definition, uh, one of the definitions that I found. And as, as I read this, I want you to think about this not only as a definition for got your back, but how about this as a definition for Jesus? And brothers and sisters, shouldn't this be a definition for all of us? When someone has your back, they're there to support you unconditionally. When life seems to blindside you with undesirable events, they're there for you without complaint. Supporting you in your moment of need, not for their own selfish, self-gratifying reasons, but because your well-being to them is foremost in their mind and heart. A second person wrote, someone that has your back recognizes the goodness, even the greatness in you, especially during the moments you're not willing or able to see it. Simply stated, when someone has your back, your life will be greatly enhanced. Jesus stands up for us. And we are called to stand for him and for his church. And to serve in all sorts of ways. Dale Carnegie said, if you want to conquer fear, don't sit at home and think about it. Go out and get busy. We are able to share our faith in a number of ways, to get busy in a number of ways, through sermons and Bible studies and small groups, our alehouse ministry, mission trips, vacation Bible school, our website, prayer groups, worship and music and personal invitation, church, get busy. Courageous faith conquers fear and leads us into hope. Because our relationships matter. Our relationship with God and our relationship with each other and our relationships with our neighbors and our world. And through it all, Jesus has our back. And we're able to share his teachings to those who are frightened, those who despair, those who feel put upon, closed in, and helpless. So don't be afraid. The cross 
is our strength. And Jesus has our back. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.